warrant for your arrest. Do whatever you want. I don't care. Walked out. Never heard about it again since. That's all that took. And I didn't, I didn't even know what my argument was going to be walked in that day. I knew I was going to raise the issue of beneficiaries and stuff like that, but as soon as she said, I'm going to issue a warrant for, 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 for the arrest of the, the accused, that's what it was. I just said, well, I just told you I was the man that was arrested that night and spent the weekend in jail. You just told me you're going to have issue a warrant for the arrest of the accused because he's not here. So obviously, I'm not the accused. Thank you. Thank you for your legal determination. Have a good day. You guys sort whatever you want out. Left. That was for four traffic charges and obstruction of a peace officer. It took four minutes. Never heard about it ever again. And just as icing on the cake, uh, that was January 4th. I was charged November 25th. Uh, next week, I'm sending a little thank you to the court, uh, citing Section 786.2 of the Criminal Code of Canada, which says you've got six months to convict somebody in summary convictions from the date of arrest, or it's over, it's game over. It really doesn't matter, though. If they ever try to contact me again, I just get into this now, because now I just send letters to them, right to Andrew Swan and stuff like that. Um, I can get into some of the stuff I've done that I'm probably... I'm never going to go to jail. They're just probably going to shoot me. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, I mean, seriously, like some of the stuff I've sent off now, I just I I sent stuff to the Minister of Justice, uh, the, the the Minister of Finance. The one to the Minister of Finance, I actually told her. Uh, I said, like, you're not doing you you failed in your job as a public uh, trustee. Uh, the fiduciary trustee that I appointed you as, you didn't provide lawful excuse as to why, blah, blah, for, regarding a matter. I just said, I'm, 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 I'm coming after you. I said, you've, bre you've breached, the tr you've breached uh, committed a breach of trust. I'm coming after you. I'm not going to stop. I'm the executor and the administrator. I ordered the trustee to do something, and she didn't jump. How come the sheriffs didn't walk all over them like they do in, in court, right? Well, I'm working on that. And I just literally said in the last line, Trevor, you thought that was the funniest thing he's ever read, where I just said, you are going to have to shoot me to make me stop. And rape your girlfriend. Well, that was to Andrew Swan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the, for the record, the Winnipeg City Police, about seven years ago, when I first started getting involved in this kind of stuff, actually kicked in the door to my girlfriend's house and threatened to rape her looking for me. So that was Sergeant Hutter and Sergeant Young. If this goes online, congratulations, you're real men. Love you guys. 110-pound woman at 2 o'clock in the morning in her night robe. Yeah, you guys, heroes. So that really stiffened my resolve, by the way, years ago, and now I don't care anymore. I don't care. I'll meet them head on. I'll meet them in court. I read you guys that letter that went out to the Crown Prosecutor earlier today. It said, there's not going to be a lawyer in court next time. It's going to be me. I'm going to be there in my full commercial liability as an executor and an ambition beneficiary. I said, we're going to have a chat in front of the trustee. And I'm looking forward to it. I said, because you're going down. This is the letter that went out. Basically what that said. And like, that, that's the way, you, you got to let these guys know. I mean, if you walk into the court and you're like, um, uh, uh, I, I, I think I'm the, somebody told me online I'm the administrator. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> you're, you're getting bailed out in about a month. It's over at that point. That's what happened to Marty. The difference is, and uh, like we should get into some courtroom tactics stuff later on. I want everybody to understand the philosophy here, though, of what the biggest things going on here is. And that's the fact that once you figure out that the courtroom is just this holy trinity, and that the judge, justice, is trying to fill the role and be the player of the administrator, the executor, that automatically makes you the trustee by default. And then the crown, the basically who is the government. So the, the crown is, the reason the crown is a beneficiary is because the crown is the government. They're one and the same now, right? They're the same entity. So technically the government is both beneficiary and administrator. They're filling both roles. They're just having two different people play both roles in the courtroom. That's all that's going on, but they're one and the same party. That's why the deck is stacked. And then you're sitting over here as the, the, the trustee. It doesn't matter what they're calling you. I don't care what they're calling you. You're filling the role of the trustee, but they're not telling you that. I don't give a shit if they call you George and your name is Bob. It is irrelevant. Of course, it kind of makes it seem a little stupid. Well, I, well, actually, my name is really Bob, so I don't mean that literally, right? It just it doesn't matter who you are at that point. If you're the trustee and you filled the role of the trustee, 
then you're going to be told what to do by this guy. And if you don't, in comes somebody who's not part of the Holy Trinity. He's called the sheriff because he's supposed to make sure that the trustee does their job. And that's why they're the highest authority on the land. You always hear from people, sheriffs are the highest authority on the land. Why? Because they're the ones that hold the trustee accountable if he doesn't do his job, so what he's ordered to do. Yep. Can you get the sheriff to arrest the justice? Uh, I haven't done that yet. I planned on doing that in January in a city of Winnipeg uh, bylaw violations trial where I was actually... Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go in and I was going to do that, but then I actually decided that I was going to go in and I was going to try a different tactic, and that was against Marcus Buchart, and I was going to be more honorable and just see where I could get just by dropping hints that I knew what was going on. And uh, the city of Winnipeg, you can interrupt me anytime you want for the break, by the way, but the city of Winnipeg was coming after me for bylaw violations on my properties. Now, the problem was I, I, I know how to deal with that if it's my own personal properties, but the, the, the property was held by my, one of my numbered corporations for business. And so I went through the, well, shit, it's a, it's a registered business. I was like, does that mean it's automatically under their jurisdiction? I'm, I'm hooped. I'm like, no, wait a minute. That's just a presumption. Just because I went down and, and filled out some articles and corporations, I'm the one that gave it substance. That doesn't bind me to anything. And I'm like, but I'm like, I still can't uh, go in and basically be the, the, like the executor and the beneficiary of, of, a, cor of a corporation. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm like, what role would the judge want to fill? if the trial was against a corporation. You've got to remember, a, a, court, a courtroom will make itself whatever it needs to be uh, for, the, for the specific moment. So if it's a corporation before it, if, uh, if you wanted to be the head honcho of a corporation, who would you be? Well, no, actually, uh, we'll get into corporations and people, or private citizens, after the After the break? break? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, okay, yeah. so um, after a safety break, we yep. We're we'll uh, just going to expand on a couple of things I, I, I covered before we took a little break there on, on the fact that the trust law is being carried out in the courtroom here. I, I'm going to touch a bit on these cl the claim of rights that everybody was big on for a long time uh, and, and why they're irrelevant, completely irrelevant. Uh, and then we're going to get on to some arrest roles here that has to do with the trust law as well. So we'll keep on kind of topic with that. But let's get on to people that want to use lawyers in a courtroom. And everybody believes that a lawyer, oh, you use a lawyer, you're contracting with a lawyer, then the, the lawyer is automatically contracting you. Yep. But even uh, getting a lawyer to get you out on bail after remand. Yeah. Um, you, you, any of these scenarios, right? Everybody's got a mistaken impression of what the lawyer's actually doing, right? Oh, they're all members of the Bar Association, they're all colluding. Well, that, that part's actually true. But what they're doing is not what everybody thinks they're doing. The lawyer is not contracting you with the court, right? Because they've got all the procedures and their bar association nonsense and the whole nine yards. But what's happening is because they're all colluding together and all members of the bar association, whether they know it or not, because they are trained, lawyers are trained, your lawyer is trained that they have to obey the master. They're called the master in court. They bow to the guy. Yeah, I didn't know. Okay? Who do you bow to? Your master. Your, your master. The, 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 if you walk in somewhere and, and, and people are bowing to somebody, they're bowing to the guy with the most authority in the room. And who's got the most authority in the room? You. Well, technically we do. But what are they operating on? They're operating on the presumption that the judge is the executor and administrator. Because they're bowing to him. He's the top guy. Mm -hmm. So that's what your lawyer is allowing. Your, your lawyer is not contesting the fact that you're actually the administrator and the beneficiary. The lawyer is allowing the court to continue on the premise that this guy is the executor and this guy is the beneficiary, which are one and the same anyways. So your lawyer is allowing the court to operate on the presumption that the government is the executor and beneficiary and that you are the trustee. And the lawyer's got no problem doing that, selling you down the river, because he's not the one that's liable. He's making money. You are. That's right. You're the trustee. You're the one that goes to jail when his master orders it, not him. And that's why they're limited liability. 
hey, I'm, I'm, I'm limited liability. Uh, you want to go after the full lim limited liability guy, the guy that's actually going to take the fall here. Go after, go after this guy. So that's what is going on with the lawyers. That's why you, I'm, I've heard the, okay, well, I, I went to court with a lawyer. We won kind of stuff, okay? Like you're one of the 3% of uh, people that actually went in court with a lawyer even trying to make, well, I, I made my lawyer put that affidavit in the file and you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like that's all irrelevant. I'm just going to tell you what's actually going on in the courtroom and that is that your lawyer, because they're all members of the Bar Association, he does not have your best interests at heart. He's not, he has no oath to you to your best interest because his oath to the law society supersedes that oath, which is a conflict of interest mm -hmm. and which actually kind of, uh, that's your remedy down the road, by the way, if you ever want to go back and say, well, this guy didn't tell me he had a superseding oath, which means that what he allowed to go on in that trial was not, it was not consensual. There was no contract, right? And that's, that's a big thing. We could have an entire episode just on no contracts. <laughs> And that's a fun one. They don't like that. Um, so that's what your lawyer is actually allowing. Your lawyer is allowing the proceeding to continue on on the presumption. But wait, that is consent. If you consent to a lawyer, that is consent to the overall proceedings. But you didn't get full disclosure. No full disclosure. He didn't tell you he has a superseding oath. Right. Right? Right. That's wrong. They didn't disclose that's what I, what's actually going on here. Yeah. So you, you, were, you were hoodwinked. Yeah. Can you be... Can you be bound to a contract where you were hoodwinked? Yeah. Can I sell you a car with, oh, with no engine if I, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Yes, yeah, so you got remedy. There, there's never too late to go back, right? And that, that's the, the, one of the great things too. But, uh, so that's what's going on when you hire a lawyer. It's not he's contracting me with the court. Uh, he's binding me to third party arbitration and this and that, the whole nine yards. No. What he's doing is he's not contesting the fact that this guy is not actually the executor and the administrator. That's all that's going on. He's allowing it to continue on this premise that you're the trustee, you're going to pay fines when ordered, you're going to go to jail when ordered for the benefit of the government at the instruction of the government. What? Okay, and this here is also the same as uh, if you first time come out and actually say something in writing to, let's say, uh, the DMV. Yep. Uh, like you, you never had... Uh, full disclosure to the contract. Yep. You know, like they, they say that they're offering a license, but it's all shown insurance. You were never shown the full insurance. Okay. Well, you were never shown the condition of insurance. And when did you ever? We that? yeah, we spoke about this before we were rolling on the cameras. Something else we can talk about another day, even uh, about the fact that it's impossible for it to be a contract between you and government. It's absolutely impossible. We can get into that to another meeting. We've talked uh, the people I did talk to here real quick about that. Everybody knows mm -hmm. now why, and yes, it's true, it's impossible for you to have a binding contract with the government. Uh, how many lawyers in your estimation actually know that they're perpetuating this little fraud? I like to talk with them about this down at the courts. I'm there frequently. I was there for seven hours again today. Uh, I really don't, I, I got to spend more time on my actual career that pays the bills because <laughs> yeah. I spend a lot of time with this one, but uh, they smile a lot. And then suddenly a lot of them don't want to talk to you anymore. They go silent, Dave. Right? Um, so a lot of them know. Uh, if they don't know, they suspect. they suspect or they have, you know, like a, a vague comprehension of what's really going on. Judges know, or they're just robots. Most they judges know. I think there's no question about that because the, ju the judges are all, sorry, all picked from lawyers the best players of the game. that they know are very aware of what's going on, are comfortable with the idea that they're screwing people and have no problem committing this fraud against people. And actually, I don't even like to use that word. It's not fraud. There's no such thing as fraud because you're not contesting it. Yeah. Right? So I've heard people say, well, that's fraud, or uh, you know, people have been charged with defrauding oh, court. And lie, uh, cops can lie to obtain consent. Yes. It's not fraud. It's not fraud if you don't know your rights. That's not fraud. Okay. Right? I don't even like that word. I tried yeah, to... Ten, I, 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 yeah, I... I there you go. I try not to use that word even. I let it slip out there. So, uh, yeah, I was kind of saying it in quotes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the word, uh, you know, uh, people, you've, you've defrauded this court or something like that, right? And it's like, I've defrauded this court, so I've done the opposite of fraud. Isn't that good? I've removed the fraud from the court. Whoa. Right? Isn't that a good thing? Yeah. And then, wah! And then you get some of that again, right? That's, you always know when you're right. 
Because yeah. they freak out, right? That's when they lose their minds. Otherwise, they're very calm. They're always like, Sheriff, take this man away, right? He's calm because he knows you don't have a clue and you're screwed. As soon as there's...